As I'm sure you heard yesterday, Candace Owens was fired from the Daily Wire. But you don't tune in here to get breaking news because I'm not one of those YouTubers who tries to slap together a video as soon as possible once something happens to post it to be first, to try to get some views. You tune in here to get some in-depth analysis of how the media actually works and hopefully get some laughs. But this is no laughing matter. Of course, the reason why Candace Owens was fired is rather obvious. But the problem is, in mainstream conservative politics, you're not allowed to mention the obvious, just like you're not allowed to criticize Israel whatsoever, no matter how accurate and valid and even mild that criticism is. That will get you called anti-Semitic, which is a label that is often thrown around in order to silence people that's a lot more dangerous, much more dangerous than someone being called a racist. Early yesterday morning, Jeremy Boring, the Daily Wire CEO, posted that they and Candace Owens have ended their relationship, which is a fancy way of saying that they bought out the remainder of her contract because technically they couldn't fire her because she didn't violate the terms of her contract. But because she was talking about things that are completely taboo in conservative mainstream politics, upsetting Ben Shapiro and the Republican establishment, the neocons, she needed to be silenced. And so they paid the remainder of her contract, and then sent her on her way, which was likely around $10 million because she was probably making about $3 million a year, had several years left on her contract. Not that she even needs that money because her husband is exceedingly wealthy, the heir to like a precious metals company who has a net worth of over $100 million. I don't know if you've seen Candace Owens' wedding ring, but she's rocking like $100,000 with the diamonds or diamond earrings, $50,000. The girl is loaded. Glenn Greenwald noted it was only a question of time, adding there was no way an outlet founded and built around Ben Shapiro could possibly remain associated with a vocal critic of U.S. financing of Israel. One of Candace's response was, my crime is that I do not believe that American taxpayers should have to pay for Israel's wars or the wars of any other country. I will not change my mind. So the question is, what will you do to me next? The world is watching. But all this started when Candace Owens refused to condemn and instead defended Kanye West when he started talking about problems that he had with a certain group of people in the music industry because Kanye West gave her career a big boost and the two had become friends. And as Kanye later revealed on another podcast, The Daily Wire then banned Candace from even interviewing him to try to hear him out. They told Candace Owens, I couldn't be on the Daily Wire. Like, you can't even explain yourself. And we don't care of how you got to that point either. And that's f***ed up. They told Candace you can't be on Daily Wire? It's not even about... Yes, yeah, she did. That's what they said. But the straws that broke the camel's back started piling up back in October after the latest flare-up between Israel and Palestine and the ongoing 75-year-old ethnic land dispute between the two different groups over various territories. When Candace expressed sadness over the thousands and thousands of innocent civilians, children, and women who Israel killed in their response to the horrific attack that Hamas perpetrated back in early October. That and Candace didn't want the United States getting involved militarily or financially because the United States gives Israel billions of dollars in American tax dollars every single year and made a comment about how Nikki Haley kept seemingly putting Israel's interest ahead of the United States by saying this sarcastic comment. Well, I am here today to endorse Nikki Haley for president of Israel. I think she's earned that. I think Bibi Netanyahu is going through a very bad time right now. Support for Israel has virtually collapsed socially. If you're paying attention to the trends and you're paying attention to what people are watching, you're paying attention to the protests. And the one person that I think is capable of getting it back is Nikki Haley with enough money from foreign interest lobbies. But the last straw was this interview she posted on Monday, which was an hour and 43 minutes with a rabbi who had smeared her as an anti-Semite in an article which has since been retracted that was posted on PJ Media. And she completely humiliated him. But tell us, Ben, how cancel culture is only something that the left engages in. So as we'll see, again, I'm, I'm just foreshadowing because you need to know where I'm going here. Okay, the fact is that the cancel culture exists. It is extraordinarily ugly. 
it's particularly ugly for people on the left, actually, because if, if you're on the right, like I know conservatives are not interested in canceling other conservatives and they're not going to go along with this. If you're on the left, you probably will be canceled because your own crowd is going to flee from you screaming and running for the hills with their hair on fire the minute that you are called out as anything approaching a racist. Actually, Ben, it's quite obvious to everyone now that mainstream conservatives do that as soon as somebody is called an anti-Semite. In fact, the Daily Wire is siding with the ADL on this because on Thursday, one day before she was fired, oh, I'm sorry, technically had her contract bought out and decided to part ways, uh, the ADL started ramping up a cancel culture campaign against Candace. And let's not forget what Daily Wire CEO Jeremy Boring said back in November when the conservative cancel culture mob started surrounding Candace when she expressed sadness about the civilians on both sides that were dying over in Israel and in Palestine. Because to the neocons, to the mainstream conservatives, all Palestinians, everyone in Gaza is considered to be guilty. I'm currently on leave of absence for my executive duties while overseas producing some pathetic movie. And in my current capacity, he says, I cannot fire Candace Owens. That's something Ben and I have in common since he is also not an executive in the company and cannot hire or fire people because he stepped down as the co-CEO or the editor-in-chief just to basically be talent and then had other people take those roles over. But he says, even if we could, we would not fire Candace because another thing we have in common, a desire not to regulate the speech of our hosts even when we disagree with them. Candace is paid to give her opinion, not mine or Ben's, unless those opinions run afoul of the law or she violates the terms of her contract in some way. Her job is secure and she is always welcome at the Daily Wire. Now, Candace Owens' show or podcast, whatever you want to call it, will continue. She posted a link to her old personal YouTube channel, which the Daily Wire doesn't have any control over, and she likely will be joining Rumble or have her production company start syndicating her podcast to all the other podcast platforms. So she's definitely not going away. But also, she couldn't help but use the situation to try to grift a little, to be honest. As you know, to me, there are no sacred cows. One of the benefits of being truly independent is I don't have to keep my mouth shut because I don't have to worry about offending a company that I work for, like Matt Walsh not saying anything about it. None of the other Daily Wire staff saying anything about it. They don't want to bite the hand that feeds them. Other people in the industry usually keep their mouth shut because they don't want to criticize other hosts who should be criticized in some cases because they want to be on their shows. They want to go to certain events. I don't want to be on their shows. I don't want to go to certain events. I don't care. The rumors are true. I'm finally free. If you would like to support my work, you can head over to CandaceOwens.com where you will be directed to my locals page, which is like a private Facebook page. It's a subscription only for like five bucks a month. Very common in the independent media. Of course, I have one, but I'm just a guy in my kitchen on a laptop. I wasn't getting paid millions of dollars by Big Con, by Conservative Inc. And then this is where it gets really pathetic. I totally understand plugging locals page. Totally normal. Or you can give a gift at GoCandice.com, where the website is just straight up soliciting donations. Like the poor girl's unable to feed her kids or pay her rent. Like I said, she was making $3 million a year and her husband's worth over $100 million. Would you like to give Candace Owens $100 a month or $250 a month on recurring donations? May I remind you that independent media outlets and personalities like InfoWars and myself are always many years, if not decades, ahead of the mainstream conservative media outlets who are always beholden to a certain set of rules and being controlled by certain interests. And so they always have to wait until... It becomes more than obvious that it's safe to talk about certain issues that independents trailblaze and raise awareness of before finally they will weigh in on the obvious. And so it was Alex Jones who gave Candace Owens her first big boost, inviting her in studio after she was a nobody when she just started a YouTube channel and had a very interesting critique of Black Lives Matter. Thanks for coming into town. I'm so happy to be here. Great to have you. Uh, you're even more impressive in person. It's, it's, it's uh, wonderful to have you. Where should you start in the few months we got to break? I think you should recap right. what the feminist cult tried to do to you. Uh, you know, in your own words, they just thought basically you're a woman. Uh, you're reportedly, you know, supposedly a minority, uh, and then you, so you belong to them. Right. 
Then she was brought into the inner circle of Conservative Inc. through Turning Point USA and then PragerU and then ultimately at the Daily Wire. And so Conservative Inc. is very sad that their token black conservative now has gone to, in their view, the dark side. Uh, first off, um, the cleanest way I can tell you this is that when, when Candace started getting real famous and the Kanye thing happened and everything else, one day out of nowhere, she unfollowed me on Twitter. So I had sort of helped her get to a certain extent. And then she unfollowed a bunch of people. Like she had a bunch of people that she followed. He helped her. He boosted Candace Owens and made her a superstar. And then, and then she unfollowed me. So I took that sort of as like a mark of just like, and I'm not trying to create shit here. I really am not actually. Uh, you took it as an obvious point that she realized that you are a loser in conservative ink. But I just kind of took that of a mark of like, oh, like, there is a limit to our friendship, like it was sort of transactional for you to a degree. Then, I don't know, a couple of years ago, she changed her phone number and didn't tell me. Uh, so I, and I needed to contact her about something and I had to go around away. So it's like, I don't know, if, if you were friends with someone, would you be doing that? But again, I'm not doing this for drama purposes. I'm doing this. He needed to contact her. He needed to give her the call to give her certain advice in order to save her career. So if you're a beautiful black conservative woman who likes to rail against DEI, transgenderism, and other forms of wokeness, but will never, ever utter a single critical word of anything that Israel does, then there is a new opening over at the Daily Wire for you. Remember how upset Ben Shapiro was at Tucker Carlson for platforming Alex Jones for bringing him in studio for that interview just a few months ago, which then started things in motion, which ultimately quickly led to Elon Musk restoring Alex Jones' Twitter account. It's hard to find less of an Alex Jones fan than I am. The sort of soft peddling of Alex Jones that Tucker Carlson did on his ex show the other day, I thought was absurd. I mean, Alex Jones did for years promote a conspiracy theory that's- Yeah, yeah, 10 years ago, we know he made some mistakes that he has repeatedly apologized for, that the mainstream media and the Daily Wire are trying to define him. Ben then went on in this 12-minute video to show about 10 minutes of compilations from Media Matters attacking Alex. Ben Shapiro also has a beef with Tucker Carlson, and Tucker has one with Ben because Tucker, like most Americans, doesn't want the United States to get involved militarily or financially in an ongoing ethnic land dispute halfway around the world, not in Russia or Ukraine, not over in Israel or in Palestine. There are people on the right who have spent the last two months every single day focused on a conflict in a foreign country as our own country becomes dangerously unstable on the brink of financial collapse with tens of millions of people who shouldn't be here in the country. We don't know their identities or the purpose of their being here. Like stuff that could destroy the country for real and make it impossible for my kids to live here. They've said nothing about that and they're focused with laser intensity on foreign conflicts. And I'm like, at some point, I've got four kids. What else is interesting that no mainstream conservative pundits will ever talk about, other than defend if somebody confronts them about it, are the anti-BDS laws, which are anti-boycott, divest, and sanction laws, which are in place in 37 different states, which mean if you own a construction company and you are like Candace Owens and you criticize Israel, then your company will be banned from having any government contracts. So your construction company will not be allowed to even make bids to, let's say, like build a new city hall or build a school in the area or to fix the roads or build a bridge. Those are anti-BDS laws. I should probably wrap this video up because I've already noticed too much. And since I'm just a guy in my kitchen on a laptop, not getting paid millions of dollars by a big conservative media company. Instead, I just write books and sell awesome t-shirts like my new free the January 6th hostages shirt, which you should order from markdice.com or click the link in the description below. And if you think that the topics in this video are getting a little bit too hot, then you should definitely read my books like my new one, The War on Conservatives in paperback from amazon.com or download the ebook from any of the major ebook stores. And of course, there's a link to the Amazon listing for that down in the description below as well. So click it and head on over there and check it out.